Hello, welcome back to another eye-opening and meat-busting edition on Truth Ambassadors TV. In our previous video, we examined a controversial message by Dr. Berdamina who claimed that the concept of believers going to heaven after death is not biblical. His perspective understandably shook many. Today, I brought together a panel of renowned ministers to shed more light on this subject. These include Pastor John Hege, Pastor Lazarus Morka, Pastor Paul Eneche, Apostle Oropo Michael, Apostle Johnson Suleiman, and Apostle Joshua Selma. The wealth of scriptural insight will help provide clarity on the reality of heaven. First up is our special guest Dr. Berdamina who previously stunned many by stating that the idea of believers going to heaven after death has no biblical basis. Let's hear him out first before drawing conclusions. The, the aspect of somebody dying and going to heaven is nowhere in the Bible. That somebody died and went to heaven is not a Bible truth. It's nowhere. You won't find it anywhere. Nobody wrote that so and so died and went to heaven. It's not in the Bible. That when anybody is born into the kingdom, he is born into heaven. The moment you are born into the kingdom, that is the day you entered heaven. Heaven at last is not Bible, it's heretic. There's nothing like heaven at last. Heaven's reality is what you encountered the day Christ entered. Quite thought provoking, isn't it? Now let's hear what other ministers have to say about the reality of heaven. First up is popular televangelist Pastor Jim Hagee expect some startling revelations and a guided thought of heaven based on scriptures. But let me give you a guided tour through heaven. So when you see heaven, you'll be smart enough not to want to go to the place called hell because it certainly is there. No one in their right mind wants to go there. Heaven is first a place. In the text that I have read, I go to prepare a place. Say that with me. I go to prepare a place for you. But where I am there you may be also. Jesus lived in heaven. He came to earth and he said, heaven is there. I believe what Jesus said. I don't believe what Newsweek said. Stephen saw heaven. As he was being stoned to death, the Bible records it, being full of the Holy Ghost, he looked into heaven. Say that with me. He looked into heaven and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand, continuing. And he said, listen up Newsweek, listen to this. Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. He closed his eyes and he went there. He's there right now. St. Paul saw heaven. He said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and I was lifted in the Spirit into the third heavens. Logic tells you if there, are, if there is a third heaven, there's a heavens one and two. Wouldn't you say that's true? Heavens number one is the heavens that you can see with your eyes, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Heavens number two is where Satan has his throne, according to Job 1, Ephesians 6, and the book of Revelation. Heavens number three is where God has his throne. John the Revelator saw heaven, and he left us a travel brochure in the book of Revelation. He said it is four square. That means lots of things, but it means this. It's perfect. Heaven is the only perfect society you're ever going to be in. Wow, that was quite descriptive. Very fascinating description of different levels of heaven by Pastor Hagee. Now, if heaven truly exists as a literal place, will our loved ones know what's happening to us on earth? Let's get Pastor Hagee's perspective on this. People are asking, Pastor, do people in heaven know what we're doing here on earth? Absolutely they do. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, we are greatly compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and run the race with patience that is set before us. Paul is writing in the book of Hebrews that in the heavens there are thousands, times ten thousands, and thousands of thousands that are watching from the balconies of heaven our every move. I saw the Olympics the other day on television. And I saw them as they raced toward the finish line and the crowd stood up and screamed for people to go, push, do everything you can to get across that finish line first. I want you to know they're doing that in heaven. Samuel, 1 Samuel 28, Samuel was in heaven and he knew what was going on between King Saul and Israel. In the balcony of heaven, they are cheering us on and they're saying, fight the good fight of faith. They're saying, don't give up. 
They're saying heaven is worth 10,000 worlds. They're saying resist the devil and win. They're saying run to win. I see them as they stand in the balconies of heaven with their robes of righteousness over their heads, swinging it, and they're screaming as we're running for the finish line. Go, 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 go. Don't stop. Cross. Heaven is worth everything. Give it all you've got until you get there. Amazing stuff. There's certainly a lot of cheering going on in heaven over believers running their race down here. What are your thoughts so far about the reality of heaven? Feel free to share in the comment section. Next up is Pastor Paul Enneche, who shares from his first-hand experience of visiting heaven. Brace up for a thrilling testimony. My brothers and my sisters, because we are at the very end, God has been revealing the rapture, revealing heaven and hell to his people. Last Tuesday, I, I, I was not here when the testimonies were going on, but I, I was watching via the, 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 the iPad, and I saw people who had various encounters of heaven and hell. Myself, I have seen hell before. I've seen heaven. And what I saw of hell is it is not a place you will wish your worst enemy to go. What I saw was the throne room. I saw myself suddenly lying on the bare floor. I couldn't see the face of anybody. All I knew, because in the realm of the spirit, anywhere you are, you know. I was lying on the bare floor right in that throne room and was worshiping. I was hearing familiar tunes of Michael W. Smith and Terry McCallman and the, and the worship was everywhere was worshiping. The floor, everything was worshiping. And I said, oh, these things that we, this song we hear on earth, so this is where it originated from. So the vision of heaven and the vision of hell is real. Am I communicating here? And I can go on and Wow, just wow. The reality of heaven goes beyond my imagination. Let's hear more from Pastor Nature about his jaw-dropping encounter with someone who temporarily visited eternity and saw a glimpse of heaven and hell. One day I preached on this altar, hell is real. Anybody was there. Now the message is available. If you were not there, pick the message, hell is real. I finished, it was in the second service, part one, two, three, four, five. After the second service preaching of hell is real, a young lady started came out for the altar call when I gave the altar call and before we knew it she was off as if it was under the anointing she fell off when the ushers came to lift her up one usher could not two ushers could not three ushers couldn't it took like four or five ushers she was gone my challenge was why should somebody come to church answer the altar call and die they picked the person right to the back of, of, of the auditorium until I finished the service. Then I rushed to the back there and I, I began to pray for this girl. Oh Lord, this girl must not die. This girl must not die. This girl must not die. I applied sternal pressure. What we do in medicine when somebody's in coma, there is a pressure you apply on the sternum, this bone here, this central bone that connects the ribs. Uh, that, that, that can tell you the, 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 the levels of coma. If somebody is in deep coma, some levels of pain, you will bring his hand. But, but he will not respond to any call. Some levels of pain, the person will move the body. But he won't, he won't do anything. And the deepest level of coma, no response at all. In fact, death. So I, I, pressed, I, I applied the maximum pressure and there was no response at all. Wow. Has this person died? I checked the pulse, however, and noticed that it was a bit faint. Then I said, oh God, this girl will not die. In the name of Jesus, death, go, come back. Then she shook like this. Opened her eyes. Who was the pastor that attended to her? One of our ministers attended to her, to the girl at the back here. Do you remember? Hell is real. And I said, find out from her for me. And then I was relieved. I, 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 don't, I didn't want to know what the rest. I am relieved that she's alive. When they found out from her, she said the moment she came to the altar, she was gone. Next thing she finds herself walking in, etern in, in eternity. And here she sees one side very far. People were there rejoicing. She sees another side, very terrible. People were roasting in the fire. And an angel appeared at that junction and said, out of these two places, where do you want? 
And she said, that place where they, were, that, where they are dancing. And then the angel said, but you are too dirty to go there. The way you are, you can't go there. Oh God. At that junction of eternity was when my voice came. Death, go. Come back. And then she came back into her body. Beloved brothers and sisters, there is no doubt that heaven is real and that hell is real. We can't help but believe after listening to real life testimonies like that. Can you imagine coming to church and ending up in heaven's gates only to be disqualified at the last minute? This urgent warning from Pastor Nature is not to be taken lightly. Now, Pastor Rokbo Michael provides an eye-opening perspective on God's original intent for the earth to reflect the dimensions of heaven. I suppose this is what Dr. Ben Damina was attempting to communicate. And so Jesus revealing to us what God had in mind when he created the earth was that heaven, the dimensions of heaven should be seen on earth. And so any portion of earth that does not represent the dimension of heaven will need the intervention of the will of God, the wisdom of God, and the authority of God. The reason we have healings and miracles, signs and wonders is because we want to insist that heaven will be visible in the earth realm. The hallmark and the assignment of man on the face of the earth is to replicate that dimension. In fact, when God created the earth, he decided to create a gateway between heaven and earth and he called it Eden. And what God did was to put a portion of earth in that region, that garden, just to give man an idea of the prototype of the heavens. Because his goal in dominion is to ensure that Eden is not a garden. The whole visible realm should become Eden. But in order for him to find accuracy, the pattern of the heavens had to be represented on the earth in form of a garden. So the relevance of man in God's assignment is the degree to which he expands Eden to cover the whole earth. If you will start a family, you will start a family because you are capable of bringing Eden there, not because you are aged. If you think marriage is about age, then you got it wrong. Because the goal of our existence here is to make sure Eden becomes the only visible reality you see. Because Eden is not something that started from earth. It's something that started from heaven. It was planted. Eden is heaven extended to earth. A man's assignment is to advance the corridors of Eden. Now when God... Powerful revelations. As stewards of God's creation, expanding heaven's dimension on earth should be our utmost priority. Now to the ever fiery apostle Joshua Suleiman, who wants about hell's certainty and the need to live consciously of heaven's reality. Whether you like it or not, heaven is real. Heaven is real. Whether you argue it or not, heaven is real. There's a place called heaven that will go when we leave this world. We will get there. How prepared are you? You are so carnal and so unscriptural. All you do, you build all your, your life. All your life and your hope is in this world. Heaven is real. Heaven is real. How prepared are you? Heaven is real. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Heaven is real. Hell is real. There is a place called Sheol, Hades, where people burn. Where they burn. Where they look for the drop of water on their tongue. And they have no access to it. And they burn eternally. It's called hell. It is real. There's a place called heaven. Where people go and get their reward. And eternally, they are praising God. It is real. Powerful. But before we listen to what Apostle Joshua Seman has to say on this subject, let's get additional clarity as we examine more revelations from Pastor Jen Hege as he describes the breathtaking beauty of heaven we are sorrows are no more. This is the time of trouble. This is a time of tension and turmoil and trial. But I want you to know that heaven is a place that God has prepared for us where the sob has been changed to the shout of joy. There is no crying. There is no parting. There is no death. There is no suffering. There is no disease. There are no cancer wards. There is no heart disease. There are no wheelchairs fixed with twisted bodies. There are no oxygen masks. There are no hospital halls filled with the sounds of the sobbing and the groans of the dying. Heaven is a place where the deaf hear. Heaven is a place where the blind see. Heaven is a place where the lame leap with glory. Heaven is a place where the asthmatic runs like 
the Olympian never being short of breath. Heaven is the place of joy. Heaven is the place of shouting and singing. Heaven is the place of peace. Heaven is the place where Jesus is. Heaven is the place you've been invited and I want you to go in Jesus' name. What a glorious description of our eternal home. Now get ready to be amazed as Pastor John Hickey tackles questions about the resurrected bodies and surprises are waiting in heaven. Jesus said in Luke 24, he said to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee after his res resurrection, do you have any meat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and honeycomb and he took it and he ate it before them. I want you to hear this. A ghost does not eat fish and leave crumbs. In our resurrected body, we're going to have a never dying body, a disease free body, a perfect body, a glorified body. I ask you, does this look like a glorified body? No, it doesn't. But when we get there, we're going to the marriage supper of the lamb according to Revelation 19.9. What is that? The marriage supper of the lamb is a seven year Jewish fiesta. We're going to be receiving crowns, five kinds of them. The crown of life, the victor's crown, the martyr's crown, the soul winner's crown, and the elder's crown. You'll be able to look at a man's crown in heaven and tell what he did and how well he did it. Robes of righteousness. And then in heaven there are going to be two surprises that I think is the reason for the 30 minutes of silence. The two surprises are going to be this. Those who made it. Look, look who got in here. And then look at him, he's in here too. And look at her, I never thought she'd be here, there she is. Is this the right group? The second surprise will be those that didn't make it. Dr. Super Duck's not here. I saw him every week on television. <laughs> the Bible says, many shall say unto me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not done signs and wonders in your name? Have we not done miracles? Have we not cast out demons? Say it with me. And Jesus shall say unto them, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Outstanding revelations. This surely puts a nail in the coffin of arguments that heaven is a nebulous place or state of mind. Let us know your stand so far in the comment section. Moving on, let's dive into the golden nuggets of wisdom about end time events, the reality of heaven from profound teacher of the gospel, Apostle Joshua Selma. Let me tell you this, the moment there is that glorious exodus, you will see people run to church in confusion. The Bible you will leave behind, people will run and hold it and say, what is happening? The Bible will suddenly become a bestseller. It will be the most accurate roadmap for them. No other book, no other thing will matter. And we'll meet with him. And we'll say, Savior, we believed you. And we spent our life making the world know. Listen. The issue of the gospel is not a task of an evangelist alone. You have to understand this. This is why we labor day and night to see that this glorious gospel, the global harvest, because a day is coming, whether you like it or not, Jesus Christ will return and the Bible says the remainder of the harvest together as a family. That would be the unleashing of catastrophe on earth. Catastrophe that will make Saddam Hussein look like an angel. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all We'll see. But your assignment now is to believe that he died. Your assignment 
is to believe that when he went to hell he went there for you please listen to what i'm telling you regardless who you are regardless what religion and for those of you who are watching me from all around the world i respect your spiritual convictions but what you are hearing is not an opinion of a religion a day will come everybody will believe everybody in hell today is a believer the only thing is that they believe too late what an intriguing lineup of viewpoints on this vital subject so does dr ever damina still stand alone with his unconventional perspective feel free to share your verdict in the comment section and remember to subscribe for more limited truths on biblical doctrines and teachings finally let's hear pastor lazarus Morka's angle on this the theme of our message qualification for heaven qualification for heaven heaven being the abode of the most high god has standards or qualification which must be met before one can enter into it though every one of us desire to make heaven some people will be disqualified because of not meeting the standard or qualification for entering into it some people will be disqualified everyone hearing me all over the world will endeavor to be qualified in order to make heaven at last straight to the point pastor lazarus Monka emphasizes that heaven has standards which every believer must meet through righteous living not just church attendance before we conclude this edition i would like you to meditate and share your thoughts from the following scriptures in the comment section number one john 14 2 to 3 in my father's house are many mansions if you are not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself and where i am there you may be also the second one is 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1. It says, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The third one, Philippians 3, 20-21, it says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the workings by which is able to even subdue all things to himself. And finally, 1 Peter 1, 3 to 4, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Please permit me to add Revelation 21, 1 to 4. It says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them, and be their God. And God will wipe away tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There will be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Quite thought-provoking, isn't it? As you have seen from the various insights shared by these men of God, and even from the scriptures I just read, heaven is not just an abstract concept, but a definite reality that should spur us to live righteously. What are your final thoughts on this subject? Is heaven a present reality for believers as Dr. Bez Azat, or a glorious eternal destination affirmed by other ministers? I can't wait to hear your perspectives in the comment section. Don't forget to share this video with as many as possible. It could change someone's eternal destiny. See you in our next Meet Boston episode. God bless you. Shalom.